All right, another response video. Um, might have to cut this one into a couple parts. Got to eat my dinner and such. <laughs> you're really kind of busy. Can't keep making these videos. Got a lot of things I got to do. So, well, whatever. <laughs> you know, you got to do what you got to do. Strike the iron while it's hot kind of thing. Okay, but geez, a lot of videos. All right, anyway, vital finds. Here we go. Holy Mother of God, I just watched Amanda's reply. First of all, I'm glad that you replied, Mendham. Um, I'm a tough cookie. I can handle this. But where did you get this inheritance thing coming out of my mouth? Okay. <laughs> yeah, we'll go ahead and we'll play your other video, all right? I mean, if we really have to do that, then let's do it. But uh, I don't think there's much point in having to do it, but let's do it. Uh, if I can find it again, there it is. So here we go. It's part of this statement here. Listen carefully. Love to be inside the person's head. Now, what are they seeing? What are they feeling when they get repulsed over money? Or, oh, the other thing is rich people. Rich, rich people. I mean, it's this pukey kind of a, you know, like nobody ought to be rich. So nobody should own a business, no one should be successful at that business, people should just give away their profits, I mean, what is the, nobody should have an inheritance, um, <laughs> so there you go, that's where I got it from, okay, um, you connected two things, somebody making their own business, doing productive work, and inheritance, you combine these things like they're the same thing, all right, uh, and that you, you just have this sense that everything's all equal. Uh, that, you know, you, you really think that everybody's, you, you'll use this example later, but that everybody who's rich is a Bill Gates. All right, and let's understand what Bill Gates did. Let's understand his huge productive contribution to mankind. He bought an operating system from a guy who didn't understand its real value. All right, and he canard, he, he fooled IBM basically into renting it because IBM didn't have any confidence in the um, PC. All right, and so he fooled IBM into renting it from him. So Bill Gates had a constant hold on that operating system, a copyright on it. All right, we've seen what he did with that copyright. Okay, he extorted us for decades to pay him freaking money for an operating system we all hated, only because there was only about uh, uh, 500,000 um, creative software products that it could only run on that operating system. So we were basically extorted into financing Microsoft, and you think that's a brilliant human innovation? We are so much better off because of it, right? So instead of having some open source infrastructure that computers would be run on, we had Microsoft for decades. Uh, you know, I don't think you're going to win that argument. All right. Human, humanity is not better off, um, you know, being extorted. All right. The price of a PC was made higher than it should have been only to feed the coffers of Bill Gates. Uh, so back to your other video. Got to go find it again. Takes a minute. Sorry. Um. <laughs> oh god let's see okay so a person i don't know let's take myself okay so my parents didn't give me anything not any money to go to college nothing 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 um i don't know why but it was there whatever i wasn't talking about your personal life was i i wasn't talking about your personal experience i never made the accusation that you came from wealth I was making the argument that it's bad social policy. You can't tell the difference between those two things. One's an argument about what social policy should be, and one's uh, uh, something else. I didn't make any personal insinuations or anything else. So why do I have to defend, why do you don't have to defend your life? So let's move a little bit ahead, because we're not going to really play the defend my life crap. Earn it? I don't have any right to it. Now, on the other hand, what happens when somebody dies and they haven't spent all their money. I don't know. What are you suggesting? Well, I made a whole bunch of videos about it, but yeah, I suggest that every dollar bill is made out of something. It's, the value of it is made because you can buy things with it. You can buy a man's 
uh, incentive to go into the ground a mile down and dig diamonds out of the ground, okay, and maybe die. You can buy coal. You can buy something else. Somebody, you can put somebody else in jeopardy with that dollar bill, all right? So that's where its value comes from, all right? When somebody wastes it or squanders it or gets it for no good reason, you're insulting that dead man. You're insulting the risks he took. You're insulting the hard work he did, all right? You're degrading the value of it. Um, and, and that's the obscenity. So yes, that obscenity should be limited. So yeah, you want to play, you want to play a numbers game? Let's play a numbers game. Okay. Uh, an estate should only be allowed to give a million dollar head start. Okay. To any spawn, direct spawn of the estate E. Okay. And anybody outside of the estate, there would be a maximum limit of 10,000, 10 million dollars that could be distributed to people outside the immediate family. And that would be it. Yeah. And the rest of it would go either, either you just put in a pile and burn the money, which makes everybody else's money more valuable. That's the practical fact of it. Or you give it to the government. You pay the debt with it. You do something constructive with it. Okay. You don't buy gold toilet bowls with it. No, you do something constructive with it. Um... Are you suggesting there be some kind of a law that it has to be turned into the government? Well, I don't think that's right. Yeah, well, then you might as well just blow the whole government up, right? I mean, whose debt is it? Is it our debt or is it somebody else's debt? Who's going to have to pay for it? So you'd rather take the money from some hardworking man with two kids to take care of. You'd rather force that wife to go to work, okay, than oblige the spawn of the rich to do the same, to even do a little bit of work. You'd rather just have it all handed out to people. They get a free lunch just because they're genetically connected, all right, or because they said the right words to Howard Hughes on a lonely highway somewhere. I mean, come on. You, you, you want this arbitrary bullshit birthright system to decide who owns what, okay, and you somehow think it's offensive? Uh, when when, when you, we, we would say to hell with that and let's instead uh, let mothers take care of their damn kids? Um... So, for instance, if somebody's parents bought them a house, bought them a college education or whatever before they died, I don't know, you know, I, I don't see how that fits in with capital, capitalism or whatever. You don't see how that changes the horse race. We're all talking about this race of life. We use these terms like pull yourself up by your own bootstrap, self-made man, all this other crap. You don't see how that kind of corrupts that game. You don't see how that says, well, the hell with this equal start crap. We won't have an equal start. We'll have an unequal start. And it won't be based on any kind of merit whatsoever. Okay? Like I said, what is the merit of being born to the right mother? How exactly did that baby earn privilege? How exactly did that baby earn the right to control money that a man died in the ground for? How exactly? And we're talking about control. We're not talking about ownership, okay? Life is about controlling things, all right? And control should die with you. If you've earned some control, then yes, you should have the control. But once you die, somebody else has to earn the control. You don't just give people a driver's license because their mother had one. You don't just pass it down. You don't say, well, you've inherited my driver's license. No, you have to earn the right to drive, all right? We should have to earn our place in this society. Okay, dot birthright, earn it. It's like, I, I don't know. I just don't know what to do with that. It's, um... Look, it's a pretty easy, simple argument. Okay, um, I wrote some notes, too. Pilgrims had slaves. I'd have to look that up. I, if that's the way, that, if that's what happened, then, of course, I don't agree with it. Um... I don't even know if pilgrims per se, pilgrims quote unquote had slaves. What I'm saying is as the colonies started to form, okay, um, different societies had different ways to deal with things. But yes, the big change that happened in America is that the people who were in America first decided to be the owners. They took it from the Indians and then they decided to bring over some poor people to exploit, okay, because it's very advantageous. Lots of desperation to take advantage of. And that's part of this equation you don't understand either, is there's this thing called death deprivation all right and desperation is is, is is what is a consequence of it and deprivation desperation changes contracts okay people aren't equal in contracts anymore because one person's acting out of desperation but there's just too many things to research here um, okay so you're saying a capitalist um, equates to being a cheater 
I mean, I took some notes, and I I don't have the exact quote. Yeah, well, see, that's the problem. If you're going to be simplistic, if you're going to try to reduce things to nothing, well, then there's no point in having the conversation. I mean, I don't like that my videos end up being 10 minutes long or 20 minutes long on these subjects, but damn it, it's because it's a little bit fucking complicated. It can't be, su if I could sum it up in one frickin' word, then I would just say the magic frickin' word. No, I have to articulate and give examples, and so you have to argue with my examples. You have to argue with my argument. You can't paraphrase my argument into nothing. And that's what you're doing here. You're just paraphrasing it into nonsense. I'm not going to replay your video, but along the lines of capitalists being cheaters. Hey, I don't like cheaters either. I really, I, it's not exactly the argument I made, okay? What I said was inheritance was a cheat. So get that part straight. Um... Okay, you're saying that you do not go along with socialists dividing up the pot. All right. Well, the thing is, is I don't quite know if there's a generally understood definition of socialism. Um, I looked up in the Wikipedia here. Socialism refers to a broad set of economic theories of social organization advocating public or state ownership of... The, the administration and the means to distribute goods, whatever, so. Yeah, right. Now, if you just took what you read there and you took it seriously and really thought about it, okay, that would be an acceptable definition of socialism. Most socialists would say, okay, I'm all right with that definition, okay, because that definition doesn't say anything like everything gets thrown in a pile and we divvy it up equally. It doesn't say anything like that, all right? So why don't you stick with that definition, okay? Public ownership. You see, the word ownership is in there, right? Okay, all it's saying is, is yes, yeah, socialism is about um, rewarding workers, okay, rewarding productivity, not rewarding birthright. That's why I um, mentioned something along the lines of um, that corruption and cheating can take place among government officials also. So I was yeah, no duh, okay, but most of the corruption and cheating that takes place in our government is because the liars and the cheaters, the capitalists, the guys who like spam on the internet, like, uh, like cheating, okay, like the game playing, they're also invaded our government, okay, because we don't want people to be accountable. No, we can't put a camera on them. We can't watch what they're doing. We can't make anybody accountable, all right? Judges aren't even accountable, right? They can ab abuse your civil rights deliberately and willfully. You can't do a damn thing about it. Government officials, no, they're immune. Police officers they're immune what is this bullshit what is this immunity crap okay that's the fucking problem too many people fucking immune too many offices closed from our eyes too much shenanigans going on all right if, if you're going to work do the damn job you're contracted to do and nothing else don't be harassing no women don't do any other kind of crap all right what's the big problem no problem whatsoever accountability can be imposed on systems government is not um, by by um, any any requirement to be unaccountable okay it's unaccountable because too many human beings in society are making a living off of cheating saying that if that is one of the reasons that people like to lean towards whatever you call it I'm calling it socialism then I don't see that as a way of eliminating cheat fraud waste because all of that takes place in the government bureaucracy also um yeah, well, like I said, it's a separate subject, okay? Accountability is a separate subject, but obviously there's going to be some obvious difference between public, what the public owns, which is our government. We, the people, deserve accountability. You would allow the corporations to do their business in private. You would allow them to play their wicked little games, all right? I would just say, the hell with it. We don't need them. They're not the innovators. The employees are the innovators. The owners are not the innovators. There's very few uh, Henry Ford examples in history, okay? And that's it, that's always starts off as new money. The point is, is what does it evolve into? What does that $300 billion evolve into? Where does it go? Did you see any of that descendant money grow into anything productive? Did, were, were the descendants productive? Did they do a goddamn thing for the human race? No, they just spent a lot of fucking money. Uh, whatever, I'm going to cut this off now and uh, get some business, and so there will be a part two. Sorry about that, but, you know, life will go on.